Hello, and welcome to Home Space and Reason, a podcast about creating a home that thrives. Hi there, I'm Christina Browning, your host. If you know your home could be so much more than it is, I discuss home functionality, aesthetics, and automation. I'm a realtor and a home functionality coach. I geek out on every subject imaginable regarding your home and yard, challenging you to think of your space differently to get the most out of every square foot. I post questions for you to think through about your space and your reason. This podcast is all positive, offering you virtual high fives and celebrating every win. Remember, there's no such thing as perfect, but you can still aim for your best every day. In this episode, let's discuss a room we all use every single day, the bathroom. Let's discuss it in terms of functionality, aesthetics, and automation. Episode 22. You might be wondering, how in the heck is she going to do an entire podcast on bathrooms? My friend, I could talk about rooms and spaces all day long, and that includes the almighty, hardworking bathroom. From deciding how it should look to deciding if you want to remodel it or not, thinking first of how it should function, and then working backwards is the ideal way to approach it. You may be the type of person to escape to the bathroom just to get some peace and quiet. You may be familiar with this if you're the parent of a young child. Want to climb Mount Everest or start your own restaurant? The bathroom can be the perfect environment to really think about what you want and the way in which you should go about it. Or maybe you don't actually go there to think per se, but you end up having the greatest idea ever in the shower. I see you nodding your head. According to an article by Christine Yu on Headspace.com, just before you have an insight, you become momentarily less aware of your environment. This brain blink cuts out distraction and allows us to focus inward so that our subconscious can make connections between ideas and bits of knowledge already stored in the brain. Then, Eureka! The solution pops into our consciousness. The shower is kind of the ideal epiphany incubator. Not only does the warm water elevate your mood, you focus your attention inward. You have some mild sensory deprivation. You can't see very much. There's the white noise of the water. The water is warm, so you can't feel the difference between your skin and the air. This sensory restriction is like an extended brain blink. You cut out the outside world and ideas bubble up into awareness. So, is your bathroom set up for relaxation and thought? Create an environment that speaks to your soul. I have a whole board on Pinterest just dedicated to bathrooms. Follow me there by searching the handle at space and reason. As a realtor, I have seen a lot of bathrooms touring homes that people are considering buying, or maybe it's your home and you're thinking of selling. I have seen everything from fuzzy toilet seat covers to bathrooms so large that they could hold some of the downtown condos I've been in. The bathroom is one of the smallest yet busiest rooms in the house when you think about it. It's also the most hardworking room. Think about it. There's not a day goes by where you're not 
in the bathroom at some point. Now you can go out to dinner, you can get takeout, so maybe you don't cook every day, but you use the bathroom every single day. Especially if you have only one. On top of routines like showering, bathing, shaving, and getting ready for work, you might also use the bathroom time to surf social media or listen to books. Because you're spending so much time here, things can bug you. So for fun, let's approach pet peeves first. The number one pet peeve across sexes, across the country, and internationally is the toilet paper roll not being replaced, which means we need to discuss specifically the toilet paper holder. When you have the spring-loaded, double-sided supports for your roll, it takes about four seconds to change a roll of toilet paper. But I moved from a home that had a one-sided rod, C-shaped kind of, where the roll hangs, and it took less time to change out the roll. Why does this matter? I have no idea. I am quite annoyed by this actually, because there are a mere seconds difference between changing one and changing the other, but I am aware that I don't want to change the spring-loaded version, and I didn't mind changing the other version, and this intrigues the geek in me. Yes, when I say I think about all things house and home all the time, I'm not kidding. Even when I'm completely not thinking about work, I still think about the psychology of why this is causing angst when the last bathroom I changed the toilet paper roll in did not give me the same angst. It's small, virtually not even registering on the scale of mattering. So why does this make me crazy? Because I realize if it makes me crazy, it makes other people crazy too. If you have a teenager or if you've ever lived in a fraternity, the roll may just go unchanged with a fresh roll sitting on top of it instead of affixed to the roller itself. This makes me giggle. It ignites the intellectual in me to come alive. So then why, if it takes us about four seconds to add a fresh roll of toilet paper to a spring-loaded toilet paper holder, is this on my radar? Because I'm doing a podcast about bathrooms, and if you're doing a renovation or changing out your holders you may want to move away from the spring-loaded versions to the single post kind that are easier to use. I have asked people and found four other main bathroom pet peeves. Finding hair down the plug hole. If you have anyone living in your home that has hair longer than, say, three inches, I would recommend something that was on Shark Tank called the drain wig. It fits most shower drains and does not obstruct the flow of water. I like that it's preventative and inexpensive, like less than $10 for a two-pack. Another one is mirror splashes from toothpaste. I like the Windex pump top dispensers for quick one-handed touch-up cleaning after brushing your teeth. If you have a paper towel holder on the inside of the cupboard beneath the sink, tidying up as you go has never been easier. Another one, pet peeve, not enough storage. I want you to go into your bathroom and look above your bathroom door. Is there enough room for a bookshelf directly over your door that could hold some bins? This could be a spot for an extra stash of things, even toilet tissue, that you don't feel like you have room for. Choosing a natural woven bin to enhance how the space feels would be helpful. Another suggestion, if you don't feel like you have enough space, is to roll your towels instead of folding them. We use narrow cupboards on the outer ends of our cabinets to stack our rolled towels in to make great use of that vertical space. 
the last major pet peeve I can detect is stinky bath towels. Vinegar helps break up mineral deposits and dissolve all sorts of grime, and baking soda is alkaline in nature which helps to neutralize odors while dissolving dirt and grease. Using them back-to-back is an easy way to eliminate several potential sources of odor and build up as efficiently as possible. Put the towels in your washer on the hottest water setting with one cup of white vinegar. Once the wash cycle is done, leave the towels in the washing machine. Sprinkle a half cup of baking soda over the towels and start a second hot water wash cycle. After the second wash is finished, make sure you dry your towels thoroughly, obviously. I've put a link on the Facebook group page to the website, One Good Thing by Jilly, where I found this step-by-step tutorial. Finding a really good bath towel that you really love can be frustratingly hard. We all want a towel that's soft, absorbent, and looks good after hundreds of uses and wash cycles. To find the best towels that are as good looking as they are absorbent and durable, I will link to an article in The Strategist where they asked eight interior designers and decorators to list the ones they select for both client projects and their own homes. I will include a link here in the podcast notes and of course I will list them also on the Home Space and Reason group page. Now let's talk about automation. Companies like Grow, spelled G-R-O-H-E, have come up with high-tech faucets with electronic timers that you can set for tasks like brushing your teeth. Basically, the tap will run for a few seconds while you wet your brush, and then it shuts down for the amount of time that you decide, and then it resumes so you can rinse your brush. If you have trouble brushing your teeth for the recommended three minutes, the faucet timer can help you with that. This can mean less wasted water and a more sustainable home. Technology installed in toilets can do a lot of things like save water, keep your seat warm, move the lid with a motion sensor, stop the need for paper with automatic water spritzing, and it can clean itself. I will include a link to an article I found by The Spruce that outlines more details about the bathroom tech innovations so you can refer to manufacturer links too. Today's high-tech bathtubs can have chromotherapy function, which uses colored lights to enhance your mood. The lights are embedded in the tub itself and can be changed depending on the effect you need. Among others, I wanted to mention, the green brings balance and white clarifies and cleanses. Electronically controlled water temperature is also more and more common for freestanding tubs. This way, your bath water is an even temperature that you can sit in right away instead of having to heat it up or wait for it to cool down a little. Now, Let's approach a remodel. The bathroom is such an integral part of households that a third of us feel that updating our bathroom is the key to home happiness. And for those who've already undergone their bathroom project, 51% said renovating the bathroom has tangibly improved their overall happiness with their home. Whether you adore the idea of a glass-enclosed shower with two rainfall shower heads, or you'd rather lounge with wine glass in hand in a porcelain clawfoot tub, your preference will affect your property value. How so? Not having a tub anywhere in the house poses an issue for young families. So the risk of negatively impacting the value increases as the square footage increases. So if you think your home is large enough for a family to occupy it someday, keep at least one tub. Alternately, removing the tub from a studio or one bedroom can increase the home's value by as much as 10%. If you're considering adding a beautiful, large walk-in shower with a bench, 
perfect for sitting while shaving your legs. Here's some food for thought. Be sure you have a hand-held shower option or other water source in reaching distance. Think of it from the standpoint like you're sitting there to shave, you may also want to rinse there, so having that additional water completes the thought process. Also in this topic of walk-in showers is the subject of tile. Texture and the extra grouting will keep your feet from slipping once the floor gets soapy and wet. Most modern bathroom tiles are easy to clean and you can choose a grout that resists mold, humidity, and stains. Homes with bathtubs that currently have homeowners who prefer a shower over a bath sometimes passionately declare it a waste. I would challenge your thought here. I find people are either in one of two camps and there isn't much crossover. You are either a full-on bath fanatic and adore this luxury, especially during cold months, or... You haven't taken a bath since you were a child and cannot imagine wasting space on a tub. If a good soak after exercise is not your idea of luxury, but you don't see yourself staying in the home you're in for more than four years, leave the tub. I know tons of people who love baths or recover from intense workouts with a good soak in Epsom salt. Another thing to think on is adding enough storage for all of the female styling accessories close to the mirror. Since we are discussing getting ready, let's talk about lighting. Light fixtures installed over the mirror is never adequate for the homeowner standing there trying to see if they look like a clown or what's really going on with the mascara since their eyes are in the shadow. Light the mirror instead along the sides at minimum. Bonus points for lighting it additionally from the top and bottom to create even lighting, which is important while grooming. Yes, there are beautiful and sophisticated ways to achieve this. A window, or windows, plural, is always nice for fresh air and light. When I walk homes with investors thinking of renovating it, I always advise adding a window to the bathroom if there isn't one. Bonus points if you have enough square footage that you can have windows on either side of your mirror. Hello, natural light. Heated floors are heavenly. I know a cat that told me to make sure to mention this here. Here's another thought. Do you want towel hooks instead of towel bars? There's no rule that you have to have a bar. And there are also towel warmers. Toilets with hidden tanks where the water storage vessel is mounted inside the wall are worth considering if you're remodeling a smaller bathroom where this design helps save space. Low flow hidden tank toilets are also sometimes called hidden cistern toilets and they help save water. Be aware that routine maintenance can be difficult since there is usually no easy access to the tank if the inner workings need attention. If you're building from scratch or taking your home down to the studs, installing two inch diameter drain pipes cost nearly the same, but will dramatically improve the quality of drainage in your bathroom. The normal drain plumbing is one and a half or sometimes even one and a quarter inch diameter PVC, which clogs easily, especially if you have several family members using the same space. Lastly, think about your hardware Your drawer knobs or poles are like jewelry of sorts. They can make a statement, figure out what you want your statement to be, and then geek out for a few weeks on options. Don't just choose the generic chrome thing that you see first because that's what you automatically expect. And now it's time for some questions about your bathroom space 
and your reasons. Question number one. Does anything about my bathroom bother me enough that I feel like I want to make a change to address it? Question two. Do I like the aesthetic of my bathroom? And if the answer is no, start considering what your ideal bathroom would have in it and why is that ideal to you and your family? Remember, we always think through it all the way. Write it out. Break it down into pieces so you can start making baby steps toward a bathroom that you love. Question three. What isn't working about my bathroom? Simply swapping out your straight bathroom shower curtain rod for those that bow out could even make a big difference in how a small shower space can feel larger. I recently suggested this to a client on a rental and it made a massive difference for a very little investment. Question four, if you feel like your bathroom is dated, but you aren't ready to blow the whole thing up, can you simply replace the countertop and paint out the cupboards? And then maybe update your hardware. Question five, open your medicine cabinet. If you have one, what's in the back? Visually identify what items you use the most. Are they front and center with easy access? If you happen to have a medicine cabinet with a metal door, you're in luck. You can stash your nail file or lip balms and other narrow things in caddies that are magnetic made for the inside of the door. Since every cabinet is different, you'll have to make sure that there is clearance to close it, of course, but I found these available at the container store at one point. And question six, open your drawers and cupboards if you have them. Where are you keeping your towels? Towels are a funny thing because often we put them in the cupboards and then proceed to whine about the lack of space we have in the bathroom. However, let me challenge your thinking here because towels can be rolled or folded neatly and put on a shelf in plain sight, just like you've seen in a luxury hotel. This little trick opens up space where they once resided for other more unsightly things that are best behind closed doors. Next, I've seen a photo by Ariana Bell that is now pinned on my bathroom's board in Pinterest. It's a photo of bathroom drawers pulled open and they have solid yellow drawer liners on the inside of the drawers, which is only matched by one singular yellow towel. I adore it. What a great idea for a way to freshen up your bathroom and bonus that this is something you could accomplish in one day. Think about this. Every room in your home is connected. You use your bathroom every single day, so how it's working for you is worth considering. How you spend your minutes at home adds up to hours and days, months, and a lifetime. So isn't it worth considering the quality of your minutes and therefore the quality of the spaces you spend those minutes in? Get quiet and listen to your heart's desires without anything on. No music, no podcast, no TV, and no phone. What is your inner voice telling you? If you're thinking of selling your home, don't forget to stage your bathroom. Photos will be in your listing and this space counts. Remove everything from the countertop and put a small proportionate green plant there of some type. Maybe it's a succulent, probably in a white tiny pot or container. If you need to paint a bright color more neutral, 
stick to spa centric colors. Imagine light shades of rocks, mushrooms, garlic, fog. If you have a loud shower curtain, trade it for something that disappears. White is not a bad idea for staging purposes. Use the hook on your bathroom door if you have one for displaying a white robe in spa-like fashion. Add something wood. Go online and look at some websites for hotels or look up hotel bathrooms and then draw inspiration from them. How can you do this in your space? Make sure all your light bulbs are working and that they are all screwed in. I can't tell you how many bathrooms I have walked into where the person either unscrewed bulbs because it was too bright instead of just buying lesser wattage bulbs or where some of them were just plain missing. Take a photo with your phone of your bathroom and imagine you are seeing someone else looking at this space to buy. Sometimes it helps you to see more clearly and identify the things you need to change. If you want to do a sale prep session with me, no matter where you live, I can do this through an online session. You'll leave with marching orders of how to tweak your space to get top dollar. Go to spaceandreason.com and click on the link Imagine. From there, you'll see two packages. There's one in-person package called Your Thriving Home, and there's one FaceTime version called Your Happy Place. Click on either one to learn more. If you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, it's really the easiest way to automatically get new episodes as they're released. Look, my family is the most important thing to me, followed by my clients. So sometimes I don't publish on the same day each week because if you're my client and I'm selling your home, you are a priority. This podcast comes after that. So if you subscribe, no matter what day this drops, you'll automatically have it downloaded. If you have a great bathroom idea, or maybe you made a huge change in your bathroom, share it with us on the Space and Reason group Facebook page and reference Podcast 22. We celebrate growth and baby steps. Home progress is great progress. Every little win is worth celebrating. I so appreciate your reviews because people who are considering what podcast to listen to won't know if it's worth their time without your input. Thanks in advance for your write-up and rating this episode. I'll meet you back here for the next one. 